So, you know, the Dr. Irani was uh, going to show an edge. They're having some technical issues. So we're going to uh, start uh, an edge here. And if his technical issues uh, are resolved, then we'll switch to him. So this is a middle-aged gentleman who came in with cholangitis. Uh, he has Ruan Y gastric bypass anatomy. And he has 1.3 centimeter stone in his duct. We're using a, so the plan is to do EDGE, EUS directed transgastric ERCP. Uh, in my practice, this is what I do. I, I go straight to EDGE instead of enteroscopy ERCP or lab assisted ERCP. So we can talk why and data, et cetera. In terms of technique, uh, we, this is the remnant stomach. Uh, I think uh, Todd likes to uh, to describe it as a cent dollar sign. Yes, I do. Yeah. And uh, we see it is uh, kind of collapsed. And uh, Todd, can you explain how you make sure this is the excluded stomach? Well, what I do first, first of all, the, the, what you see looks very much like it, but I, I inject contrast before I commit to using the lambs uh, to outline the stomach and show um, that it is indeed the excluded stomach, which has a characteristic sort of banana shape, if you will, as it goes Life. across and then goes back up toward the fundus. Um, Come towards so, me. So that's, and then, so before I commit, I want to outline that it is that there have been some uh, discussion about uh, it not being the excluded stomach when you see the stand dollar sign, but I think uh, Live? If, if you inject and you're in, you can outline the stomach. So please well. come towards me. Uh, yeah, so I think that's critically important. Do something. Do, okay. right? Even though L lift you, it. you see it looks like a sand dollar sign, you, you really want to confirm yeah, lift. that it's the remnant stomach. Right. So the one thing is, uh, here we want to make sure, uh, this is definitely the stomach, so it looks like, yeah. is with the inject as you can see it's completely collapsed you do a test injection live and you can see the contrast is flowing in in the stomach off so i moved my needle i just want to make sure we're still in place you don't want to inject intramural right. uh, I yeah i think you have a little bit of an intramural. i do i do yeah. so we're gonna we're gonna now make sure that's flowing live yeah so we may have to but you can Change. see that the, 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 the vertical part of the, uh, the, the proximal stomach there on to the right of your scope, which is what you want to see. Uh, so because, you know, we attach to a pump. Yeah. And, uh, you know, here I'm going to actually pull my needle back because I think part of this was intramural. And, yeah. uh, of course, we don't want to mess it up. So... Uh, I'll just go inject somewhere else to make sure we get the lumen. So that's yeah. that's the test and injection. You want to get see the contrast going <clears throat> towards the fundus. Yeah. And are you using a 19 gauge FNA needle here? Yeah. Moen? Yeah. Yeah. There it goes. So, you're, you're you're in the space there. It looks so like. now, so what Todd is saying, it feels it's free. You know, it's a free space. I'm gonna inject now live. The other thing you can do is put the Doppler on and you should see swirling if you're in the lumen, whereas if you're in the intramural, you won't see a Doppler signal. Oh, that looks that... nice. Yeah. Yeah, I like your description of the banana. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so let's, yeah. Uh, get the, let's get the pump, see if we can the, the other fill thing, the stomach. Now. The other thing is when you see the sand dollar sign, it really means you're probably here? in the mid body of the. Hey, Samir. Hey, you know, if you don't mind, why don't we just meet in the. Um, I don't see it. Uh, in the. Um, you're usually in the mid body of the stomach when you see the sand dollar sign. Um, and um, often where you end up wanting to put the axios is more in that vertical part once you get it all filled. That's at least my experience because the angle going into the stomach is oh. not acute when you want to get the ERCP scope through, you're not torquing to get around the corner. You know what I, I mean? Okay, good. So, uh, so here, uh, just one, one sorry, you, uh, you have my back here. So one important thing is our job now is just to fill. Doesn't right. matter 
where right. the puncture is. Usually, right. initially, right. it ends up the first puncture is in the antrum. Yep. So what you want to do before you put the stent, you actually pull the scope back and point it towards the body. Exactly. You yep. don't want to be distal and you don't want to be too proximal because the fundus is a very, very vascular. Right. So the body is perfect. Uh, the body position. Flora. So now we see, uh, come, come up, please, to show the stomach being filled. We yeah, gave him a really good... step. I have to step away one second. I'll be right back. Okay. Uh, Are you so using, he... um, what, 50% diluted contrast and saline or something? Yeah, Rosalind? exactly. A mix of contrast and saline. And we're injecting through a, a pump through the 19 gauge needle. And we just are filling the stomach here. Once we like it, then we uh, pull the scope back a little bit and fluoroscopically point towards the uh, gastric body and place a 20 millimeter axis. Fluoro? So here's looking yeah. good. Uh, I like your point, Moen, though, about it doesn't matter where you puncture here right now because you're going to fill the entire stomach up and then you'll decide where the optimal place is for the axios. Yeah, this is just uh, filling. It really doesn't matter. You see the, the stomach was collapsed, but very important point is what happened initially. We have a little bit of intramural injection. You can still see it there. So yeah. this is why the test injection, you don't want to put the pump right away. Test injection, make sure the contrast is pulling back into the fundus. You know it's in the lumen. That's, right. uh, that's, that's key. Flora shot. Okay, so hmm. that's probably good. So let's take this needle out. And, and usually, how much is it? Is it about like three, 500 cc's that you're putting in? Yeah, this was, this was about that, 300 yeah. cc's. Uh, so now I'm going to... Uh, Let's do it under fluoroscopy live. So pull back here a little bit. And here, so you see what happened here? You indent it with the scope fluoroscopically. And you know you're very close and nice. Okay, 20 millimeter. And can you comment, Moen, on 15 versus 20? Do you always go for 20? Yeah, if you, uh, so Dr. Irani, who was supposed to show his case, uh, him and I uh, have collected data on this and we actually, so if he was doing it, he will be doing it the same way. And I think Todd also does it like we do it. We always use the 20 millimeter and always suture and always do the case uh, same session. And uh, the migration rate using this method is, is very, very low. Uh, never zero, but close to that. Uh, but you got to use a 20 and you got to suture. So live, um... please. To follow up on that, there's an audience question oh, here, Mo. Yeah. If a 20 is not available and only 15 lambs is available, would you mm. proceed with ERCP in the same session or yeah. later? So we've done it before. There's, there's going to be a lot of friction. Uh, you know, uh, so I, I prefer not to. So you see here, we're using the cautery tip. We went through the stomach and I pushed the catheter all the way. So this is 20 millimeter hot had axis. So if, can we zoom in the camera guys and show the room view? Zoom towards me, please. Like towards the device. Let me know if you guys have the view, the room Not view. Not yet. Yeah. Okay. So no, let, no, no, okay, no, good. Yeah, now we have good. Okay. So this is, uh, so you see the catheter is all the way down. We want to lock the catheter open the stent deployment catheter and Will deploy. You view, view as well? Yeah, so we'll put the EUS and the room of view, please, side yeah. to side. Because we want to see that distal phalange you just deployed. Okay, so uh, good. So now I am going to pull back. So basically I want to oppose the excluded stomach to the pouch, so I'm pulling. Pulls gently and slowly until we have little tension on the catheter like that. And it looks like a football. Yeah, and then I'm gonna deploy the second flange in the scope. And when maintaining the EUS so view, you see there. So now, so this is the intra-channel release. So now we have to push the catheter outside the scope. Please switch to end of view to show it. Okay, we have endoscopy now. Yep, good. Okay, good. 
So, so here, a little bit pull away and torque to the right. And you're seeing it there. So now I'm gonna push it out of the scope and that's it. So yeah. now we're gonna pull out right away and then I'm gonna dilate to 18 millimeter. So we'll get a, just a CRE and dilate to 18. So you can dilate to 20, but you know, sometimes occasionally we've seen bleeding, especially if you're high up in the fundus and the stent we use to tamponade the bleeding is a through the scope esophageal stent. And the one we have is 18 millimeter. So I don't, so to have a good tamponade, I go maximum to 18 in case we have severe arterial bleed. So that's why I do 18 and not one. And I think that was a great demonstration of deploying the proximal phalange Moen, um, totally in the scope and then pulling back, right? Straightening right. out and, and turning to the right. Yeah. Um, very important to make sure it's deployed properly. Yep. So this is now a CRE fluoro shot, please. Good. So let's show also, let's show, good. They have, you have the fluoro image. We're gonna go to right away to 18. Floor on the side, live. Now, Moen, um, mm -hmm. for people who don't suture or don't yeah. have access to suturing, yeah. um, you know, you got to fix um, the stent. Uh, right. so if you have a stent fixed device, I think it's okay. Right. Uh, it is it 18? Down. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the, the 20, uh, it, it is 20 millimeter compared to 15. It's increased in 72% in the surface area. So it's significant, but there, there can be some friction, you know? So to avoid that friction and migration, then, uh, then uh, you know, it's not worth the risk. You gotta suture because this is how you avoid problems. Remember, if you have stent migration, that's a perforation. So here we're gonna take a look. You see guys, the end of you, we have the stomach. Yeah. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna remove the EOS scope. I'm gonna put the double channel with the suture mounted on it, suture quickly, and then we'll do the ERCP. So if you wanna go to another room and come back, we'll show you a little bit of suturing. Okay, good. So we, uh, so that's the 20 millimeter axis. It's uh, already dilated. Uh, we put the first uh, suture, I'm cinching it. Uh, go ahead. I like to put two sutures just to reinforce it well, but it takes a few minutes. And, uh, and then we'll be ready for uh, the ERCP. So Moon, if you don't have the suture system, um, no or you don't suture, can you talk about the, the what do you think the risk is with a for one stage? Uh, I might've mm -hmm. been out of the room when you discussed this. Yeah, but, but we kind of uh, alluded to this, but it's so important, you know, the, for me, the rule is to do a single stage edge, I have yes. to use a 20 millimeter axis. Right, right. And I have to anchor it because this is where we eliminated basically the, uh, the uh, migration and perforation. Right. So if, if we don't suture, I still worry about, uh, about risk. The third right. thing is during the procedure, you can encounter, like you place the stent at, at a tough angle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if your scope is not going well, you have a lot of friction, you got to yep. pause, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, and, uh, and, you know, I've had instances where uh, I had to use an alternative scope, you know, the, the maybe the Pentax scope is a little bit more flexible than the Olympus scope. So occasionally we've switched to, uh, we're lucky to have both. Right. Uh, well, let, me, so let me just say what I, I don't suture them. I've uh, lately when I've gone more proximally in the stomach, like you did, I've not encountered the migration, but I always have a salvage strategy mm -hmm. prepared. So what I do is go through do the ERCP and leave the ERCP guide wire in the duodenum. Yeah. Gently withdraw. And if it looks like there's a dislodgement, I immediately place a TTS fully covered stint to bridge uh, a six centimeter by uh, 20 millimeter um, fully covered stint right through there. And they tend to do fine. 
Yes, uh, you know, uh, Todd, we, we've had these instances where we had to put the stent and I used to do the same thing, leave a wire behind while coming back. Right, right. Uh, just with this uh, plan, you know, it, this literally took five minutes to suture. No, no, I, I understand, but not everybody, but, not everybody sutures. Yeah, them. and the other way to do it is a stent fix. I mean, also, this is all costly, right? You have a cost yeah, to it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, but I would, I would, uh, uh, ear on uh, just avoiding a, a right, perforation right. and need needs for a stand. Right, right, right. Uh, and 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 at the end, sorry, just one more one more point. You know, if if you are if you don't suture, you can't anchor the stand. You don't have a twenty millimeter device. Most again, most of the cases are elective. You don't have to push it and do do it the same session. You know, this patient has a one point three centimeter stone and he came with cholangitis. Oh yeah, so, yeah, I, yeah. So this one we have to go for it. Uh, so now the first step is access and stent placement and dilation that's done. Two is anchoring that's done. Now we go to step three, which is the ERCP uh, same session. Can I, can I yes, ask I think that's a very important point, Moen, right? Um, if it's an elective procedure, which most of the times it is, and as you said, if you don't have access to suturing, 20 millimeter, you know, stent fix it, et cetera, et cetera, um, I think it's important not to try to rush it and do it all in one session uh, for the sake of the patient. And, and wait and then bring them back. Yeah, so if you wanna think it, think about it, the patient has to come back anyways yeah. in a right. few weeks to remove the stent. Right. So right. single session is really not saving a procedure yeah. because right. you can say, hey, you know what? Let me bring you back in two weeks or three weeks. Right. Track is formed, I do the ERCP, then you take the access out yep. same session. Right. right. Exactly. So, uh, so if you think about it that way, as long as it's an elective procedure, yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. The other, the other thing you can do, uh, although I've gotten away from this and gone more to single stage edge, is you could do an hepaticogastrostomy and temporize. Uh, but yes, it's additional, um, you know, and then you can work integrate. If they're not huge stones like what you're dealing with here, often you can balloon dilate and integrate, push the stone down in a room Y patient. But I agree with you. It's a case like this, you want to go transpapillary. Can I ask one real quick question? Let, let's put the end of you while you're, okay, yeah. so here's the end of you. Uh, and we're gonna, so the way we can elate this or we go through the stent is as if it's a pylorus. So you wanna aim to the top of it like here, and then we go we go here, we didn't right. go in. So, so here we have to be careful because it looks like there is an angle there. And, but here we are able to pass. Any guidance for fluoroscopy can be helpful in this situation? Laura, yep. Because uh, if you feel this is moving with you, then then you gotta stop. So so one thing here that I've seen, I don't know, Todd, if you've experienced this, is the uh, fluoro, please. So here you see we're going in the wrong direction, right, Flora? Yeah. Yeah. So live. Okay. Good. So is the uh, pylorus, you know, you know, I find that the pylorus is stenotic in some of these patients. Yeah. And uh, we've had to dilate yeah, or change yeah. scopes. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's a access point or angle issue. I, th I think it's a combination. I agree with you because you are coming completely different in your approach. It's almost like as if you've experienced, as you know, doing intraoperative ERCP, uh, with uh, a surgical laparoscopic port into the excluded stomach, things are different, right, than they are when you go uh, through the mouth. And I think it more sometimes resembles that. Um, and the same can be said when you get to the papilla, your view is often a little bit different than what you're used to in a native situation in terms of positioning, you know what I mean? Yeah, and here I'm I'm experiencing this kind of feel, you know. I uh, yeah yeah, it's yeah. it's not going smoothly. It's not friction, right? Uh, Fluoro, please. It's uh, right, but you feel come, come a resistance me, as what you're happened? pushing. Yeah, yeah. Flora, what about putting me. the patients on the left lateral decubitus? Yeah, I mean, you know, change position is next, and you know, this patient is row and Y gastric bypass patient, uh, so he is really barely fitting on the table and very, very hard to maneuver. But yes, uh, that's, if I can, then I'll change the patient's position. And that's the, usually the next trick, uh, Ali, is uh, left lateral. So we'll, uh, we'll continue to try here to get there. 
so if uh, if you guys have somewhere else to go, please do and come back. There's an audience question real yeah. quick. Um, there's an audience a question that's asking, if you don't have suturing, can you use clips to fix the stent? Yeah, through the scope clips are, uh, will be like placebo, you know, just, for, you, just anchoring right. it to the mucosa. So it'll make right. you feel better, but it really right. does, will not do anything. Right. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, agree. Um, last real quick question, or we can come back to this. Um, how do you, one of the things I think to avoid the bad persistent fistula, I know you're going to talk about closure, is also not avoiding going through the staple line with your axios. Would you agree with that? And You know, and we, we, we looked at that and, yeah. uh, and it, it's really, it didn't, so logically, yes, because that's a relatively ischemic area. So right. healing may be less, but it didn't pan out. You know, the right. most important factor is yeah. you take the axis out at, as soon as you don't need it. Right. And right. my limit, I'm not starting at four weeks, you know, three weeks may be yeah. safe for the fistula to form, but I like four weeks. Yeah. yeah uh, so here, I think guys, I have to move the patient, like Ali mentioned to a left lateral. So uh, if you want to go somewhere else uh, to another room and then, uh, I guess they want us to, to stay here for, for a minute. And I think we can- Final point, Will. Final point. So sometimes- Let's see if we can, can move the patient left lateral. Hmm? Yep, go ahead. Yeah, we know, no, final point. Sometimes you can anticipate the problem putting from the beginning the patients on the left lateral. Is that possible for doing the US procedure? Yeah, before? so for, uh, yes, for uh, the fluoro, this is what's happened now. It's actually in, not, not uncommon, Ali. So yeah, maybe it's a good idea. Just for the fluoroscopy part initially, uh, it's uh, much easier to uh, just interpret the, the images. Uh, maybe guys, we can get some help to turn the patient to the left side. Okay, uh, I'm sweating a little bit here. If you guys- uh... Uh, We can't tell. Oh, no, I mean, we work hard for this, so. Uh, Fluoro shot. I'll update you in a minute. Okay, they've just, been wiping. Uh, they've, they've been wiping your brows. So <laughs> go to twelve. Go to twelve. So here's what we did. Uh, we couldn't really go left lateral. He's more than 400, 450 pounds. Can barely uh, fit on the table. Uh, but we changed scope into a little bit more flexible scope. Very difficult position. I don't know if you, if uh, I don't think you can see the scope, but I have an alpha loop on the ERCP scope. So here you go. Uh, so, so position is extremely difficult. Yeah, we see. Yeah, yeah, and uh, the fluoroscopy image is not the best because, uh, as you can imagine, yeah, with uh, with all the fat layer. So let's inject, please. Uh, put the balloon up. So we're gonna get an occlusion cholangiogram live, please. Okay. We the wire is in the gallbladder, I believe. Uh, so we're gonna see if we can get it to the bile duct. And given the difficulty with the positioning and uh, everything else, the fact that he has cholangitis, he's been on antibiotics for a few days, so I feel comfortable injecting at this time. Uh, bring back the wire, please. And uh, okay, and re 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 inject here. Yeah. Okay. The stone is distal. Uh, and here we haven't really opacified the proximal duct. There maybe the uh, yeah. maybe the cystic insertion is very low. Oh, huh? yeah, I think yep. that's inject, what it inject. Is. Yeah, yeah, live. Yeah, if you could, if yep. you could. Yep, here you go. Here you go. Yep, yeah. Uh, off, just inject, inject, inject. So my goal here. So by the way, he has antiphospholipid syndrome. He came in with like iron out of five. Uh, we can't, they ha he has to go on anticoagulation right away. So it's going to be a sphincteroplasty type of thing. Uh, fluoro shot. Okay, let's put a wire up now, put a stent and come out. So we're going to decompress him. Uh, let this, uh, let the track heal and I'm come back for a more elective ERCP with the, with the sphincteroplasty, possibly each up. Fluoro shot. Okay, push the wire up, please. Live. So it's still going. Yep, come back, come back. Off, come back. So let's see. And here you see, I can't show you the papilla well just because of the position here. Live. Okay, go now. Yep, go. Go, go. Off. Okay, balloon down. So we're going to put a 10 7, please. Exchange. 
So, so what do you guys think of now just establishing drainage in a patient with cholangitis rather than try to go and do a lot? Yeah, I, I agree with that. I mean, just like you said earlier, you got to come back later anyway to take the stint out. Um, and it, the, the most important thing for everybody to remember is that drainage is the most important thing. And so, um, especially if patient's unstable, which I know he isn't, but it's better to just sometimes drain and come back to fight another day. Um, it looked like the distal duct uh, as it entered was kind of narrowed down there. Uh, I, I, I'm thinking that's all stone there. This, uh, okay. this is remember a 1.3 centimeter stone. Right. Uh, so I think that whole, so, so which comes to, uh, it's, this is what I meant to ask uh, to Todd, Linda, and Ali, if Ali is still awake. Yeah, uh, I'm here. Good. So the, this guy, I can't cut. I can't do a sphincterotomy. Right. And the stone is, look how distal that thing is. How are we going to perform sphincteroplasty or large balloon sphincteroplasty? Well, today, if you're only getting in there to decompress. No, next time. To... Next time. Well, I know people make a big, a big deal about dilating next to a stone and the risk of dilating alongside mm -hmm. a stone. I personally, I've done it and maybe I've just been lucky. I've not had something that happened dilating next to a stone. Now you might say, well, then I don't have to, maybe I shouldn't dilate quite as much because then you have the added diameter of the stone that's non-compressible. So you might want to go a little less on your balloon, perhaps. Um, but I, I, I think that's where you're headed with this, right? Is, is it safe? You know, sometimes you actually can fragment the stone with the dilating balloon uh, next to it. But that'd be interesting. Yeah, can I make a point, Todd? Yes, can I make a please. Point? Yes. As long as the bile duct is nicely dilated like it is today, right. I don't feel major issues in making dilation, even though some stones are in between the balloon and of the right. dilation. I want to go back uh, uh, to an earlier point that we mentioned. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you can postpone a second the RCP. So the problem I see with uh, doing two procedures in these patients is a very challenging position. It's very challenging yeah. the RCP. Yeah. So just in case in this specific situation, you can uh, try to resolve the entire situation with a single procedure, probably can be a little bit better because it is a special patient very difficult to manage, very difficult to move around the table and change the position and getting access to the papilla. So, we would have you consider to do this in yeah. just uh, one shot? Yeah, I will say 90% of the times we're going to finish the job right away. Here, um, you know, I, I because of the alpha loop, I, the, for me, I'm going to do a uh, ear shell on this guy. So I got to have a better scope position than this. I will say with the, if I put the spyglass, I'm going to be falling back every five seconds. So uh, yeah. for me, manipulating the scope, getting everything in, you know, it, it's better to let that track form and do this on a more elective basis. And, you know, I always also uh, just uh, think about, uh, you know, you spend a lot of time and there is a fatigue factor. Yeah. Uh, so... Yeah. So respect that, drain the patient. This guy has cholangitis. I'm not going to do EHL and inject a lot of fluid in a patient with cholangitis. Right. Uh, no, I totally agree. I mean, I think it's, you got drainage now with that stent. So he's good, you know, and you can bring him back on another yeah. day. So, so now we're going to pull this. So uh, fluoroscopy, please, back to the stomach, the proximal stomach. So just to show you how to pull this whole bag. Okay, fluor shot. Okay, the other thing so, is that we, so, so Linda, just one point here. I'm while pulling this scope back, you know, I'm unlocking my wheels, making sure the scope is straight so that we don't hook on the on this stent and pull back. And this is the last point: is when we pull back, we have to check on this, make sure it's still on the luminal side. Mm -hmm. And if it's not, you pull it and put a stent maybe across. But this, what I'm doing now, looking at it, you feel good about it, you feel safe. This patient is going to do well. Uh, so what I want to do is bring him back in four weeks for EHL. And if we're done with the job, I'll pull the axis at the same time. And I think the other thing is that with the stent in there, it may start to break down the stone a little bit as well um, over the next four weeks. So that may be of some help as well. 
So, Muin, any specific post procedure recommendation after this kind of approach? Yeah, no, no, we, uh, you know, the, uh, because this is a one step procedure, uh, like with the lumen opposing stent, uh, you can give just one dose of antibiotics and you're done, you know, because there's no leakage, you know, you're not putting a wire and exchanging catheters, there's no intra procedural leakage. So uh, just one dose of antibiotics. Can you discharge the patient it. the same day? Can you discharge yeah, yeah. the patient the same day? So, so this patient obviously is different. He's already an inpatient, but we do this as an out, on an outpatient basis for sure. And any final questions from the uh, audience or from the uh, moderators? Yeah, just Mouin, congratulations. Yeah. Very good job. Yeah, can you guys yeah. hear me? Great yep. work. Cheyenne, any final comments on this procedure before we switch uh, to I IU? One last comment is the other reason to do this as a one stage is, and it's a small reason, is if you get everything done the first time, in case you have post ERCP bleeding, you still have access to go back in and address it. Now, if you do all your work at the time of removing that lambs and you get post ERCP bleeding three or four days later, then you have to reaccess that point and that's a challenge. So that's another justification of trying to do it in one stage, which is why I think we- well, I know they close quickly. I don't know if they close within 72 hours, which is when most people are gonna bleed, but I hear you, some people delay bleed seven or 10 days later, which time it's probably closed, but maybe at 72 hours, it would still be um, accessible, but your, your point is well taken. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you guys for the excellent comments and uh, moderation and expertise.